I'm so honored and glad to be here tonight in Scottsdale, Arizona. I, I, I'm thankful for the phone call I received a few months back, and, and they asked me to come here and preach tonight for one night uh, at their convention. And, and you know what? I'm, I'm extremely blessed and beyond <clears throat> measure sometimes. And I, and, and I literally sit back, and, and, and I ask God, I say, God, why did you put all this on me? Why, why did you choose me? To, you know what? I'm just blessed. That's what I want you to know tonight is I'm just blessed not to be here in front of this large crowd, probably the biggest I've ever preached in front of, uh, but I'm just blessed to know that I I know the Lord. <clears throat> you know what? I've been on a whirlwind roller coaster for the last couple weeks. It seems like uh, I can't remember the last time I was home. I was. I think I've been all the way from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, all the way out to Los Angeles, uh, back to Vegas, back to uh, uh, Arizona somewhere, and now I'm over here in Scottsdale. Huh? But you know what? I'm just thankful. I said I'm just thankful. I said I'm just thankful huh? to be able to preach the Word of God the way that I get to, huh? the way that I want to, huh? the way that I was born to, huh? the way that I have to. Huh? You see, we live in a generation nowadays, uh, we don't like to be told what we got to do. Huh? We we like to tell everybody what we're gonna do but you know what I live my life being told to do exactly that which God has told me to do and preach the Word of God at every opportunity that he bestows upon me is to preach the Word of God listen to me very few things in my life can affect me but I was sitting in Las Vegas at the Barrett Jackson car collectors auction thing with some people that have become friends to me and they invited me and my son out to, to participate in it and just just to watch it if you've never been to a car auction that big when I was a little kid my dad used to take me to to the Wrangler Hill Bear auto auction where he had a good friend named Nick that owned it and and I was intrigued by it, but never have I seen something on this scale so me and my son, you know, we decided we're going to go. And, and after I finished up in Pittsburgh and I went on over <clears throat> beyond Washington, I was at, we got on a plane and we flew to Vegas to, 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 to there. And, and, and while I was there, we were sitting by the fountain at one of the hotels that we were at. And we were sitting there and, and for some reason, a name come across my heart. a second Jake stays close to me and he knows when his dad is hurting and he knows when his dad's confused and he knows when his dad's upset y'all bear with my son being beside me but a name come across my heart that day sitting in front of that fountain and, and I simply just turned the phone over and I sent a message to Sister Edie Smith <clears throat> who, who I knew was in Houston from the post that, that her husband Melvin was back at the Houston Cancer Center or whatever the name of that place is. I didn't expect the message I got in return, but the message I got in return is evangelist, he's taking his last breaths as we speak. <clears throat> and I, And all over this nation that I've been for the last year since... Sister Edie and I began to talk, and Melvin and I have talked over the last year. People have consistently asked me how Brother Melvin is doing. All over this nation, they've asked me, how's Brother Melvin? How's Brother Melvin? How's Brother Melvin? You know, I knew Melvin way back. I knew Melvin's dad. I knew Melvin's mom. I knew this. I knew that. All over, I've been asked, how's Brother Melvin? You know what that shows me? That without a doubt, this nation joined together and they prayed for my friend, uh, Melvin Smith, for over 14 months, almost a year from the day that Mel Sister Edie sent me the first message, sent me the photo to use. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, people can affect your life. Uh, they can impact your life. Uh, and Melvin impacted this evangelist's life more than he will ever know. Uh, I always thought I would get to tell him in person just how much uh, he he affected my life, uh, how much his strength, uh, how much his faith, uh, how much his endurance, uh, how much his care, uh, how much his concern, uh, how much his audacity uh, to fight that fight affected me. Uh, I did not get the chance to tell him, uh, but one day uh, I will step across the Jordan River uh, and I will get to hug his neck uh, and I will get to say thank you, Melvin, uh, because you showed me uh, no matter what they tell me to see, uh, 
No matter what they tell me I'm going to see. Uh, no matter what they tell me how I'm going to see it. Uh, I can't see anything else. Uh, I can't see anything else uh, but Jesus. Uh, and when you see Jesus, uh, you've got life. Uh, life. You hear what I'm telling you? Uh, you've got life uh, and life uh, more abundantly. Listen to me. I ain't giving you my question yet. Sit down. If you'll notice, this is the first time I think I've ever preached and I ain't told you to stand up. He affected my life profoundly. I want you to understand why later on. I'm not going to give it to you right now. Jake and I had the opportunity to go over to the Bonneville Salt Flats. And if you've never been there, I'm telling you right now, it's a sight like you've never seen. It's this great big dry lake bed where there used to be an ocean or something and 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 now it's I, I don't know i ain't no scientist i don't care all that i know is it's salt bishop and if you look out across it if you stand up on one of the ridges and you look out across it you can literally see like i think they called it a heat wave or something but you can see the change in the air it looks blurry Trying to get my point across as fast as I can. No, I'm not. I take that back. <laughs> I'm going to take my time. But I looked out across the Bonneville Salt Flats, and there was a few cars out there that day. And if you know what they're there for, they're there to go 100 mile an hour wide open. But the conditions have to be just right. There cannot be too much wind. There cannot be too much dust kicking up. I don't know if it ever rains there, but there was water out there, believe it or not. But there can't be too much water. There can't be too much this. There can't be too much that. In other words, what I'm telling you is this little man with a hat walks out there, and he determines whether you can race or not. Let me tell you something. As I stood up there on that ridge, and I, 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 I looked out across it, and I seen that thing. I looked out, and I... I got extremely emotional because remember I just got the message the day before uh, that my friend had passed away uh, and as I looked across it the Lord spoke to me uh, he said Steve what can you see uh, and I said I don't know Lord uh, I see a bunch of salt uh, I see where there was life at one time uh, but now there's death uh, I see where nothing can grow out there uh, I see where you can't do this uh, I see where you can't do that uh, you couldn't plant a pea in the middle of this salt lake thing they got there and hope for it to grow. And then the Lord spoke to me again and he said, what can you really see? If you look all the way up past it, past Bishop, if you look all the way up past it, you can see the green trees on the other side. You can see the flowers on the other side. You can see where you get just a little bit higher, and the higher you go, the greener it gets. The further up that mountain you climb, the better it gets. You know what? I don't want to see what everybody else sees. I want to see exactly what was there in the beginning, and exactly what was there in the beginning is the same thing that's standing there at the end. And I'm telling you, convention tonight. I'm telling you, pastors tonight. I'm telling you evangelists tonight I'm telling you singers tonight I'm telling you musicians tonight what I see is Jesus what Melvin Smith seen for a year of his life in the fight for his life he didn't see what you told him he didn't see what you wanted to tell him he didn't see what everybody told him was going to happen no quite the opposite what he seen was in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and God was the word what are you saying evangelist what I'm saying is we don't need Donald Trump we don't need Hillary Clinton I don't need nobody but nobody but nobody ask me who I'm voting for I'll tell you I'm gonna walk into a booth and I'm gonna write in my own candidate and that candidate is Jesus cuz long after Trump long after Hillary long after anybody you want to put in there that thinks they're gonna do something there's going to be Jesus. <laughs> 
You know what I did when I heard that and I and, and the Lord confirmed it with me? I ran. I ran to the bottom. I ran where there was no life. And I cried out to the Lord, sister. I cried out, Lord, let me be that one person that preaches Jesus. Let me be that one person that when they tell me I've done too much wrong in my life, I can still be an evangelist. Let me be that one person that no matter what they think of me, no matter what they think I ought to do, no matter what they think I should do, no matter what rules they've written down, I'll break every one of them. I'll do exactly what I want when I want and how I want, as long as God has told me why. Because I'm telling you right now, when you stand for God, you stand for Jesus, and you plant your feet, and you stand up tall, you realize that the only thing you see is Jesus, and in the beginning was Jesus. When the doctor told you you got six months to live, Jesus was standing right there, and a year later, he's still standing right there. Listen to me, can you see it? That's my question for you tonight. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Let me tell you something about my friend, my partner, my beloved child of God. He could only see Jesus. Somebody look at me and say, Steve, how a man you never met in person know all that about him? I'll tell you how I know that. He never complained. He never whined. He never cried. He never said, wow, wow, wow is me. Somebody get me a pillow so I can lay up in my bed and just be done with it. Preacher's son, remember that. My dad had a friend, my sister. It was one of my sister's musicians. I'm quite sure one of his friends is going to be listening to this, so I don't, I, as I told you, I'll do exactly what God told me to. I watched that man get diagnosed with cancer, lung cancer if I remember right, and within two months, he passed away. Why? Because he said he wanted to die. Huh? He said he wanted to die. He never complained. He never whined. He just wanted to die. Melvin did not want to die. I want you to know that. Melvin did not. Listen to me closely, saints. Listen to me. I turned around and I walked back up the bluff and I smiled from ear to ear. Because after 10, 11 months of praying for Melvin, fasting for Melvin, sharing it on Facebook, reaching multiple hundreds of thousands of people in 12 different countries and in every state of this nation, people telling me we're praying for Melvin. I finally seen exactly what Melvin saw every single day of his life. And I'm telling you right now, if this country wants to be great again, you want this country to be strong again, you want this church to be great again, you want this church to be strong again, we got to see Jesus no matter what they say no matter what they do we have to we have to we have to get back I said get back no we ain't there yet by any stretch of the word you got your lights turned down you got your disco ball flowing you got the music cranked up so loud you can't hear yourself with a single thought I'm telling you right now I love to walk into a church where they're singing about Jesus where they're shouting about about Jesus. They don't need no smoke machine rolling. They don't need no preacher dressed up better than the pimp on the corner of 4th and Tatnall. All they need is somebody so humble that he'll preach Jesus. We need to get the pimps out the pulpits and put the preachers back in the pulpits. But no, we don't want to do that no more. We want somebody coming to the pulpit in a $3,000 Armani suit that just pulled up in a silver cloud. You know what? I'd rather be broken poor preacher from J.C. Penney's best uh, and pulling up in a pinto uh, and know that one day uh, I'm going to ride in a silver cloud uh, with my Savior. I watched Melvin closely. I did not see a man that gave up. I did not see a man that ever said, woe is me. I never seen a limp, lame, lackadaisical Christian. I seen a man living life to the fullest for Jesus. Let me explain something to you where anybody else might have laid down and said, oh, I got cancer. Melvin was organizing golf tournaments. Melvin was on a roller laying 
laying asphalt. Uh, Melvin was in Baton Rouge at a street race. Uh, Melvin was telling anybody that was anybody that was anybody, trust in the Lord and love your family with all your heart. <laughs> huh? 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 Let me tell you something. I told you I ain't in no hurry. I can honestly understand after 15 months in the ministry while my father, I say it all the time, I said it when he's alive, he's the longest winded preacher I ever met in my life. I can honestly understand why, because you want to get your point across. And my point is exactly this. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? When they told you you couldn't sing no more because they don't like the way you sing. Can you sing? Just go home, get in the shower, get in the bathroom, get in the closet and sing your heart out to Jesus. He'll make a way. When they tell you you can't preach no no more when they tell you preach too crazy you're shot out of a shotgun don't worry about it go home sit on the back porch and preach your heart out because that's what God told you to do and if you really believe and you trust in God you can see it got your Bibles open them up John 1 and 1 First Bible verse I ever memorized in my life. I was in the seventh grade at Faith City Christian School. Thank God for a Christian education. That's what we need. Stop building all these charter schools. Stop tearing down the public schools and putting something you got to pay for up that don't teach the Word of God. Huh? I'm going here. I'm one in one. To me, never before, outside of my father passing away, has a death so profoundly affected me. The last time I got to talk to my father before they put the breathing tube in him, he made me make him a promise that I would preach. And I, and I remember the conversation I had with him. We were all alone. My boys had went down to get him something from McDonald's. And I said, Dad, I don't know if I have it in me anymore. You know, it's, it's been a long time, Pops. Don't worry about it, son. You'll know what I'm talking about when it happens. But most importantly, son, I want you to listen. He, my dad had a way of getting your attention when he knew he was serious. That you wasn't put on this per earth to do anything else other than preach. And if you'll preach, God will bless you tremendously. And I cannot begin to tell you from the moment that God birthed <clears throat> Rock Solid Ministries International into my life. He gave me the vision. He gave me the dream much I've been blessed. If I never get to do anything again to say that I prayed for a man of faith like Melvin Smith, huh? God tremendously blessed me. I stepped off the plane just 45 minutes ago. I thought I was going to be late. The plane got delayed coming across here. I stepped off the plane and I instantly looked down and I, I called Bishop and I said, Bishop, I'm going to be late. Please forgive me, but I, I just can't get there. Faye, he said, don't worry about it. Look, look out the front doors. Go down and get your bags and find the two police officers waiting for you. I didn't say nothing to my boy Jake, and we got our bags, and he said, Dad, we got to get the rental car. We're going to be late. And I looked up, and there stood two of Arizona's finest, huh? And they walked over to me and said, are you evangelist Charlton Bush? Now, when a cop uses your legal name, you kind of shake a little bit, see? Uh-huh. I'm telling on myself a little bit, but I've had more problems in my life with a driver's license than you can imagine. Ask my mom, she'll tell you. They clucked up at me and said, what you do this time, Pop? I said, I didn't do anything. They're here to take us to church. The officer looked at me and he said, get your rental car and come outside. We're waiting on you. They brought the rental car up front. Listen to me. They brought the rental car up front. 
And the officer looked at me and he said, no matter what you do, you stay on my bumper. We're going to get you there, evangelist. Uh, we're going to get you there. You stay right on my bumper. And the guy's going to stay right on your bumper. And nobody's coming between us. Uh, nobody's getting around us. Uh, we're going to clear the way for you. Uh, you just stay right with us. Uh, we got in the car and I looked over at Jake and I said, man, I'm not used to this. I'm used to being in the car with the lights flashing and on my way to jail uh, because I was driving too fast uh, because I didn't want a driver's license because I didn't want to do things right. He said, what do you mean, Dad? I said, but look, son, these police are taking us to church. They're not taking us to the Huskow. They're not taking us to the jail. They're taking us to church. And you know what me and my boy got to do with the lights flashing and the sirens winding? Get you some of that. We got brought all the way to the front door. Here's the real good part that only somebody that can only see Jesus can see. Those were two African-American cops bringing a white boy to church, huh? And you say it don't matter? I'm telling you right now, when you're saved and all you can see is Jesus, you don't see white, green, yellow, black, yellow. You just see that every person in the sight of God is precious. But when you're so clouded up by the devil and it's racism and this and that, you know what? You can't see Jesus. I got out of the car <laughs> and I looked over and I said, I never had that before. He said, don't worry about it. We finna get changed and come into church. We're off duty. What we did was for the Lord, evangelist. We want to hear you preach. <laughs> so I can't begin to tell you what it meant for me, for my dad to look at me. Three days, four days, whatever it was before he'd pass away and say, son, no matter what you do in this life, just preach. And when it gets hard, my sister, listen to me closely. When I get so busy with a business, with the studio, with traveling all over the place, with trying to keep up with everything and everybody, and I want to just throw my hands up and quit, I close my eyes, I get myself off in a corner, and I say, Lord, forgive me, just let me see you. Don't let me get caught up in having to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, packing a bag on Thursday, stepping on board a plane Thursday night, preaching my heart out, and getting back on a plane and going right back to work. Lord, just let me keep my head down and focus. Stand up with me. Thought I wasn't going to ask you. Stand up. I want everybody in this house standing up. Ushers, if somebody ain't standing up, tell them to leave. I want everybody standing up tonight. This message is for Melvin Smith and his family. This message is for every single one of those people that joined with Evangelist Steve and Rock Solid Ministries International. And they prayed for my brother, my friend, my partner in saving souls and chasing demons and slaying devils. Uh, this message is a testimony uh, that you ain't got to see what they tell you to see. Uh, all you got to do is believe uh, you see Jesus. John 1 and 1. Look at me. Look at me. I don't have to stand up there and preach. I'm not going to stand up there and preach. Uh, I'd rather get down here with you and preach if that's all right. Uh, John 1 and 1. Let me say something else real quick. I don't care what kind of Bible you read, as long as you read the Bible. My mom and dad had a very close friend, Brother David Carell, and he said it. The best Bible is red. It's red from Genesis to Revelations. It's red. Turn off your iPhone. Turn off your Samsung and read the Bible. There's something about the anointing that flows from those words that are in black and white or they're in red and white. There's something about it that will bless your soul. It will take you to a higher level when you honestly, 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 honestly just sit there and read the Bible. My dad had another friend that would oftentimes tell me his name was Glenn Lutz. He was a mentor to me. You know what? He tell me he'd say evangelist listen to me son when you read the bible let your mind be transformed into what those men of god were going through i said what do you mean brother lutz he said let your mind see what paul was going through let your mind see what jesus was doing let your mind see what 
anybody in that Bible was doing. And ever since then, when I pick my Bible up at night, or I pick it up in the morning, or I just read it to read it, I try to put myself in Paul's place. I try to be like a bystander standing there watching as he wandered down through the middle of the desert and a light shined. And no matter what he thought he was going to see, Jesus changed it. He shined a light so bright and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou thou me? Paul didn't say, who is that? I can't see you. Paul said, Jesus, can you see it? Listen to me. You want to write this down? Write it down. Part one in the beginning. What the Bible says. John 1 and 1 again, if you didn't hear me. In the beginning was the Word. And that Word was with God, and the Word was God. Huh? What are you saying, evangelist? Tell us what you're saying. What I'm saying is, there was a day when Sister Edie and Brother Melvin walked into a doctor's office. Maybe he thought he was a little bit sick, but maybe he thought he was just coming down with something. But there was a day when he walked in and they said, you know what, there, Melvin, uh, we got to run some more tests. And then they went back and then they went back again and then they went back again. But there was a day when that man walked into a doctor's office uh, with the love of his life, Sister Edie, uh, and, he, and, and the doctor said, Melvin, uh, it's not the flu. Uh, it's not a cold. Uh, it's not arthritis. Uh, my Lord, son, uh, you got stage four cancer and now you're in the fight for your life listen to me on that day on that day jesus was still standing right there beside my friend brother melvin he was right there with him he was walking with him he was talking with him they got on a plane and they flew to baton rouge and from baton rouge they flew to houston and you know what if you knew the story you would understand this when they got to houston they didn't know if houston would accept his insurance uh, and they were worried about it uh, sister Edie was scared to death uh, they weren't going to let her husband in uh, to the Houston Cancer Center I never seen Melvin scared and I'm not saying nothing about sister Edie uh, I'm just trying to show you Melvin could only see that which Jesus told him that which the household he was raised in all things are possible to those that believe uh, by his stripes we are healed no weapon formed again I can go on and on huh in the beginning was the Word. The Word is Jesus. We all know that. We know that Jesus was right beside God when God created the heavens and the earth. We all know that. Huh? I'm not preaching to people that just got saved tonight. I'm preaching to people that's been saved. You've been in a pulpit preaching, and Jesus has been right beside you. And when Melvin walked into that hospital, and they said your insurance is no good, the same person that was with him when he walked into that doctor's office, and that doctor said he got six months to live, get to Houston, maybe they can fix you, was standing right there with him when they told him his insurance wouldn't be accepted. Listen to me. In the beginning, your marriage is falling apart. Jesus is standing right there. They're foreclosing on your house. Jesus is standing right there. Your son's running wild. Jesus is standing right there. Your daughter's going crazy. Jesus is standing right there. Let me tell you something else real quick. My mom called me needing something. And when my mom calls and needs something, pretty much she's going to get what she wants from Evangelist Steve if I'm able. Let me tell you something, though. I got her what she needed. She called me back and said, son, there's a woman down the street. Uh, her grandson, her granddaughter just got kidnapped Saturday morning at 9 o'clock. Uh, you know what? Uh, as she was sending me the message or calling me whatever she did, uh, I thought to myself, uh-uh, uh, this ain't happening. Uh, watch this. Uh, I don't care about your Amber Alert. Uh, I don't care about Chef Judd, Grady Judd, whatever his name is. Uh, he can only do that which God will allow him to do. Uh, I'm fitting to get a hold of somebody to pray. Uh, I'm fitting to get a hold of somebody that'll call forth that little girl out the hands of that pervert. Uh, I'm fixing to call 
call forth that little girl in the name of Jesus and not one hair on her head will be harmed. Less than 24 hours later, after the masses of rock solid, after the masses of over 573,000 people joined together and Saul told me they were going to pray. Guess what? Guess what? They caught that devil. They caught that sucker. They caught that perverted imp from hell. And not one hair, not one hair on that little girl's head was hurt. Why? Because the same Jesus that delivered her was standing right there beside her and protected her. That's what seeing Jesus will do for you. Huh? So they get to Houston and now they got an insurance problem. They got to fly all the way back to Baton Rouge with a man dying of stage four cancer. So they said, the doctors, the specialist, huh? They got to fly all the way back to Baton Rouge. Sister Edie had to get in a truck and drive all the way back to Pennsylvania, drop her son off in Oklahoma somewhere. It's Spiro, Oklahoma, I think. Hold on a second. But somewhere between Oklahoma and Pennsylvania, Sister Edie put up a message. She said, please pray for me. And I just happened to be sitting in my desk. I just happened to be playing around. I just happened to be seeing what the devil did not want Evangelist Steve to see. And it jerked me to my soul's that this woman was not complaining. She was asking somebody to pray for her. Her message, Pastor. I said, I don't know you, but I would like to pray for your husband if you would have let me. He answered me back, please pray, please, please, please pray. I know, listen to what she, I, 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 I don't know if I'm saying it exactly, but I remember the day it was cold. I remember the weather, I remember the day, I remember the mood I was in. I was, I was something, you know, I was, rock solid was in its beginning stages and, and you're always sitting at a desk thinking, how can I do this? How can I do that? How can I do this? How can I make rock solid different from every single thing else out there? And I did not realize then I was already making it different by, by trying to pray for people. Uh, you send me a message, I promise you, you're going to get prayer. Huh? I got a friend not far from here named James Curry. They left that man for dead in an ice bath in a coma. You know what? I think in February I got to shake that man's hand, hug his neck, and run all over a church with him. Don't, don't tell me Jesus don't make a difference. In the beginning, I said in the beginning, but listen to me. She pulled off the side of the road or whatever. She picked a picture and she sent it to me. Listen to me, over 45,000 people agreed together to pray for that family. But what impressed me the most, what impressed me the most, the same faith that Melvin had, the very same faith that Melvin had. Listen to me closely. Listen to me closely. It transcended to Edie. Let me tell you something. That little lady got in a truck, got in a car, got on a Volkswagen, got on a skateboard a bicycle she dropped her son off she went to pennsylvania she got what she needed uh, and she turned around and she drove all the way back shouting jesus uh, that's what we need to do uh, is understand exactly that which situation we're in uh, is only allowed to happen because jesus was there melvin knew that I said Melvin knew that from start to finish. No, Melvin knew that Jesus was standing right there by him. And he had faith. He had hope. He had love in his heart. And he said, Jesus, save me. And it transcended over into his whole family. And everybody had the faith. Not one message did I ever receive from Edie that said, woe is me. Not one message did I ever receive from Edie. Yes, she was troubled. Yes, she was worried. Yes, she didn't know her left from her right. If you've ever watched a family member pass away, and unfortunately, I watched my father pass away at 5.04 in the morning on 2.14.14. Let me tell you something. It's gut-wrenching to watch it. It's heartbreaking to see it. But Jesus is standing right there, and that's where... 
I said, that's where, I said, that's where your peace is. That's where your comfort is. That's where your salvation is. That's where you know every need you have shall be supplied. That's where you may be in the pain of your life, but Jesus is standing right there and his will, I said his will will be done. And who would have thought a year ago? Who would have thought six months ago? I would stand in front of us many people, 800 and something I believe, and I would be preaching about seeing Jesus the way Melvin did. So you know what? As much as you're listening, the devil's listening. Listen to me, devil. I'm preaching about the faith of a man that walked the walk. He talked the walk talk. He didn't just play it. He lived it. And you can't stop it. And when this message goes out over rock solid, somebody's going to hear it. Somebody's going to hear it. Somebody's going to hear it. And they're going to be saved. They're going to turn their life around. They're not going to worry about the doctor. They're not going to worry about this. They're not going to worry about that. Why? Because Jesus is standing right there. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning. Let me explain something to you. (laughs) The devil don't want you to serve Jesus. The devil don't want you shouting on a platform. The devil don't want you singing a song that'll change somebody's life through the name of Jesus. The devil lays in hell and he plans and he, he, he calculates every single move that he's going to make against you. But I promise you this, the devil in his wildest dreams never knew huh, what Steve Bush would do huh, with a testimony huh, like Melvin Smith has, uh, like Edie Smith has, uh, like Ramona Breyer has, uh, like his mom has, uh, like his brother Justin has. Uh, let me tell you something. Huh, they got a testimony huh, that when times get so hard, huh, my brother, huh, my husband, husband, my son, my cousin, they saw Jesus. Give me closely, church. I'm almost done. It was heartbreaking to know my friend was passing away. But as I come back up that hill where Jake was and and the other men that were with us was, I saw exactly what Melvin seen as he took his last breath. Yeah, he fought the fight, but he got rewarded greater than anything if he would have stayed behind. You know what? Melvin laid asphalt, but tonight he's laying 24 karat gold in the potholes on the highway of holiness. He laid asphalt, but he's on a roller decked out in 24 karat gold. You know what? That's what my friend is doing tonight. He's gathered around with the throne with all the family that went before him and he's shouting hallelujah and he's dancing and he's singing he's going to get up and he's going to want to go on home down on the corner of hope and joy and he's going to get in a brand new 24 karat gold dump truck and he's going to drive it right up to his house and not just any house hear me church but a house my Jesus went away over 2016 years ago to to build for him. <laughs> I say, Lord, just let me see you. My back hurts so bad, I can't even think I'm going to get on an airplane again. Let me see you, Lord. My son is driving me crazy, and I can't get him to think. Let me see you, Lord. When I'm tired, when I'm lonely, When it feels as if I'm all alone in this world and the pressures are so strong, just let me see you. When I don't know what to do, when I don't know where to turn, when I don't know where to go, let me see you. Let me not be entangled in the things of this world that they say I need to see, but let me see you. Because one day when I take my last breath, just as Melvin did, it's Jesus I'm going to see in my next breath. Let me see you, Lord. 
Don't let me walk into a doctor's office in here and see the words that I'm dying. Let me walk into a doctor's earth office and say you can tell me what you want. You can think what you want. You can pronounce whatever you want to pronounce over me. But whether I live or die, Jesus is my king. Let me see you. Can you see it? Already they've begun to make their ways up here to this altar. You know, as I knelt at the Bonneville soft lots and I prayed, I said, Lord, don't let me see anymore that I'm tired. Don't let me see anymore that, that, that I, 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 I can't go any harder, Lord. Let me just see that this is the life you've chose me for. And let me preach. Let me reach one more person. Let me dream one more dream. Let me do one more thing in your name. Not for me, Lord, but because it's what you want. My heart cries out for the lost. But I will keep the story of my friend Melvin Smith in my heart forever because he touched me with his faith, with his discipline, with nothing but nothing but 100% tenacity and intensity to fight the fight to live for Jesus. Hey, how could a woman watching her husband die message you back, Steve, right when he was passing away? I'll tell you how. Because that woman knew what Melvin knew, what Ramona knew, what everybody else knew. It didn't matter if he stayed or not. He was going to heaven. He was going to heaven. And you know what I want to say? Listen to me. Somewhere he was in heaven walking up down the road and he looked over and he seen somebody standing on the corner and maybe he thought it was Steve. But you know who it was? It was my father, and he walked over to my dad, and he said, Brother Bush, your son prayed for me. He prayed for me. Let me see Jesus. I don't care who gets in the White House. Listen to me. I'm almost done. Look to your left and right. (laughs) Over the altar. Because they want to see Jesus. I've been saved 47 years. I don't care if you've been saved 99 years. If you can't see Jesus, you ain't saved. Oh, oh, I'll tell you what. I'm the international Pentecostal representative of, of, of whatever. You know what? You can have all your titles you want. You can think you're this and you can think you're that. But if you can't see Jesus, you ain't nothing but nothing but nothing. I'll take somebody that's just as low as low can be. But I'll tell you what. They can see Jesus. They got my vote. You don't impress me by calling all the evangelical charismatic leaders together and having them impress pray for you. Uh, You ain't impressed me one bit. Uh, Let me tell you what does impress me. Uh, When you will stand in front of the masses uh, and you will say, no other name on earth shall a man be saved uh, but by the name of Jesus. Uh, That's what's going to save this country. That's what's going to make it strong again. Uh, That's what's going to do for us that no one else can do. Uh, So you know what? On November 8th, uh, I dare you to walk into that booth uh, and vote Jesus. Uh, I dare you to walk into that vote uh, booth and vote for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Savior of all. I dare you to write that name in. I promise you I will. My faith ain't in no man. My faith ain't in no woman. My faith ain't in no organization that says they got all the right answers for all of us. My faith is in a book that's 66 books long. My faith is in a man that lived 33 and a half years. It's God's own son. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus, and it's all I see. I said it's all I see. If you came here trying to hear some message of behoovement, if you thought you were going to hear some great lyrical 
speaker. You made a bad mistake. Get a refund. I'm not one of those. I'm just a little son of a preacher who knows how to do what he was taught to do from birth. And that's preach one name and one name alone. And it's Jesus. My faith is not nowhere else but in that which I say it is. And what I say it is is Jesus. I woke up this morning. I put on my boots because I knew it was going to be a long day. I told my son, let's go. And we got on the way. But before we moved, before we blinked, before we thought, we called out to Jesus. My dad, I was grown adult when my dad died. He had been serving the Lord longer than I had been alive. But let me tell you something. He taught me with everything in him to see Jesus. Don't move to your left. Don't run to your right. Stand still. I said stand still and see the salvation of the Lord thy God which today you will see. You want to know how I know that? My Bible plain and simple tells me in Psalms 4.1 Hear me when I cry O God of my righteousness for thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. When Melvin walked into that doctor he didn't get on Facebook. He didn't call nobody. He cried out to the Lord. My Bible tells me in 1 Peter 5 7 casting all your cares upon the Lord for he cared for you. When you truly see Jesus you don't care you're stuck in a wheelchair. You don't care to tell you're going to die. You're going to cast him cares upon the man you see. And the man you see is Jesus. In 1 Thessalonians 5 18 listen to what it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Christ Jesus concerning you. Uh, make no mistake, uh, as much as the devil made a plan to destroy you, uh, God got a plan uh, to get you out. Uh, and that plan, uh, I said that plan uh, was given uh, on the cross of Calvary uh, when the blood flowed uh, all down my head, uh, all the way to my feet. Uh, and it led me, uh, it led me uh, because I wanted to see Jesus. Uh, listen to me uh, in Philippians 4 uh, 6, uh, it says, Be careful for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication listen to this in thanksgiving let your requests be known unto God when you can only see Jesus and not the problem you will call out to God you will tell him Lord this is my request this is my request Mark 9 23 if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe. Listen to me. Psalms 37 25 says I have been young and now I'm old but I have never seen I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. What does that mean? In the beginning Jesus saw you when your marriage was failing. In the beginning Jesus saw you when they fired you from your job. In the beginning Jesus saw you when your son ran ran off and went nuts. In the beginning, Jesus saw you when your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, whoever come against you. In the beginning. Woo! get you some of that so the devil can make any plan he wants the devil can do, he can do whatever he wants to do to me but you know what when you get yourself into the word of God and you can only see Jesus through the word of God because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God let me tell you something it don't matter what the devil planned almost done I've went longer than I thought I'm about to fall over listen to me Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days. I said, Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days to prepare to be tempted. You see, Jesus knew what the devil was going to do to him. From the moment that Melvin walked into that doctor's office, he knew what the devil was going to do to him. But make no mistake, every single thing that the devil came at Jesus with, what did Jesus do? He didn't quote Dear Abby. He didn't run check Facebook. He didn't flip out his new iPhone 7. He didn't do none of that hogwash. He quoted the Bible. The devil said, 
I'll give you this if you do that. Uh, Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Uh, the devil said, I'll do this. Jesus looked back at that devil and he said, you know what? Uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Uh, what's the mouth of God? Uh, hold up your Bible. Hold up your iPhone. Hold up your tablet. Hold up your Samsung. Uh, hold up your notepad. Hold up your whole computer desktop. Uh, that's the word of God. Uh, that's the word of God. Uh, and man shall not live uh, by bread alone, uh, but by every word. Jesus was tired. He was hungry. Uh, the devil said, look, uh, if you ju if you you'll just worship me, uh, I'll cause these people to come up and feed you. Uh, Jesus said, no, uh, I won't do it. Uh, Melvin said, no, uh, I won't do it. Uh, Edie said, no, uh, I won't do it. Uh, you take my life. Uh, you can't take it unless God gives it. Uh, don't do it. Every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Every word when all you can see is Jesus. All you see is every word that he ever said. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Where's that everlasting life? <laughs> it's right where my friend Heaven, can you see it? If you're listening to me on the internet, can you see it? Jesus. My friend could only see one thing. He could see Jesus, and tonight, my friend has preached through me because my friend gave me this message. going to pray for everybody that came up here and gave their heart to the Lord. I've never seen so many people in all my life want to give their hearts to the Lord. I can see Jesus. Thank God I get to meet people like Brother Melvin. Profoundly affect my life. Who give me the strength and the courage through their faith in only seeing Jesus to go one more day. Buddy, come help me pray. You want to give your heart to the Lord, I want you to make your way to the front. And let's see Jesus one more time. Let's make this country strong again. Let's make this country Jesus again. Take out a dollar bill and read it. In God we trust. Can you see it? I want to say thank you, Mel, for being a testimony to me. God bless you is my prayer.